What up and welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today we're going to take a look at another five items that I think might be a valuable addition to your workshop. Our first item may have come from a bird. Our second item looks like a medieval torture device. Our third item is a multi-tool. Fourth item is just plain smooth. Lastly, we're going to take a look at an item that I just saw. So let's go take a look at these five items. So if you know anything about this channel, you know I like to Google deep. I like to find those unique woodworking tools that you just don't see all the time. And that's what these next five items are. So our first item we're gonna take a look at is all about safety. Safety at the table saw, safety at the router table. These are all things that woodworkers need to take seriously. So I dialed up my boy Birdman and he was telling me all about the importance of feather boards. I've got a few feather boards in my shop, so let's go take a look at those first. So I've got two feather boards that I use on a regular basis. The first feather board is the mag switch feather board. Now this one's a little bit pricey just because it has the two mag switches that come with it. My go-to feather board, however, is this hedgehog feather board. Let's take a look at how this one works. If we take a closer look at the hedgehog feather board, you can see that there's a nice little piece on the back that slides right into your miter slot. When you twist the knob, it expands that bottom and it tightens your feather board right into place. Now one of the things that I absolutely love about this feather board is the on-the-fly adjustability of this feather board. If you have a piece of wood, you can adjust it so that it fits perfectly. Once you've made a few cuts at this width, it's very easy to switch the width of the feather board. You simply unscrew the knob, you place your new piece of wood into your table saw, you lock it down, and now you're ready to cut it this width. It's the adjustability of this feather board that really gives you a five inch swing from this setting all the way up to this setting. But this isn't the feather board that we're gonna be talking about today. This is a very unique feather board. Let's take a look at it. Ugh. So this is the Sommerfeld unique feather board. Let's open this box and see what's inside. So my first impressions after opening this box is this thing is a monster. If we take a look at it, it's about 25% larger than the MagSwitch feather board. So when we look at this tool, you can see that it comes with six knobs. Two of these knobs are for quarter inch track, two of the knobs are for 5 16 inch track, and then you have two knobs that will fit into your standard miter slot. So here I have the feather board installed into the miter slot. If we look at the construction of the tool, you can see that there's some cuts in the feather board with some rubber dowels. This gives it a little bit of cushion and allows that feather board to spring back and forth. If we look at this feather board when it's fully extended, you can see that the nice thing about it is it won't come into contact with your blade, assuming that your miter slot is approximately five inches away from your blade. If we look at the adjustability of this feather board, you can see that it slides approximately four and a half inches from one setting to the other. If we look at the dual locking mechanisms of this feather board, it becomes very secure when you lock it into place. And I'm gonna put my whole weight on this feather board and it's not budging a bit. Now let's see if we can use this at a router table. Now I did pull out both of the pieces that fit into the miter slot on your table saw as they're in the shape of a T. And my router table doesn't have T slots in it. But thankfully, it did come with those other knobs, which accommodate a 5 16 inch slot as well as a quarter inch slot. Now my router table requires a quarter inch, so that's what I'm going to install. There's so many slots here, we'll know where to begin. <laughs> Whoa. <clears throat> hey buddy, this chick is pretty cool. <clears throat> she says there's going to be tons of sluts in Las Vegas. Cool. Now one thing to note for the 5 16 and quarter inch slots, it's simply just a bolt. So that's something to be aware of. So with the quarter inch attachment, you can see that it slides very easily across the router table. Now this will provide the perfect horizontal pressure to my workpiece as I'm sliding it through the router table. But not only that, I can attach it to my vertical fence and have that vertical support that I'm looking for. So for me, this will be a valuable addition to my shop. I'm gonna keep this Sommerfeld unique feather board over at my router table, and I'll keep the hedgehog right over at my table saw. So I'm quite pleased with the Sommerfeld unique design feather board. I really like the fact that it's got these rubber pins in it that allow it to give just a little bit of give as you're pushing your workpiece either through your router table or your table saw. Now let's move on to our next item. So one of my favorite places to visit when I was a kid was the Tower of London. This place was amazing. It had all sorts of unique torturing devices that were used in the medieval times. And that's what this next item looks like, a medieval torture device. So for this next item, we need to go visit my old friend, the Ryobi Drill Press. Now this next tool has everything to do with cutting out holes in your work pieces. Let me show you how I typically cut out holes in my work pieces right now. So I absolutely love Forstner bits. This is a set that I got from Woodcraft a few years back. It goes all the way from a quarter inch Forstner bit all the way to two and an eighth inch Forstner bit. 
However, there's some times when you need to make holes that are just a little bit bigger than that two and an eighth inch Forstner bed. And that's what this next tool is all about. Excuse me, is this a glory hole? That's a family hole. So this next item is called the Free Donut Adjustable Circle Cutter. That's right, Free Donut. Let's go take a look at this item and see what it's all about. So this is the torturing device that I was telling you about. It's basically a drill bit that's got two sliding knives that you can adjust and create any circle diameter that you want. This goes all the way out to eight inches. So if you want to create a circle at eight inches, you potentially could. Now to me, creating a circle with an eight inch diameter seems a little bit scary to me, especially with this device and these blades spinning around. However, we're going to start off small and do a four inch circle with this device. So let's go head over to the drill press. Now a couple of things to note here. There are some measurements on the wings of this tool. However, they're in centimeters. So if you're using inches, you'll have to make that conversion. Once you've figured out how wide you want your circle to be, you slide your wing out and then you lock it into place with an Allen key. So I'm going to go ahead and measure two inches from either wing and tighten it down with the Allen key. So here I've tightened down this tool to two inches on either side. So now we can create that circle giving us a four inch diameter. So let me go put this in the drill press and we'll cut through some MDF to give it a test. So here I've installed the free donut circle cutting bit into the drill press. Now I'm here to tell you I'm a little concerned about these wings that come off of each side of the bit. They're going to be spinning very fast and you could easily injure yourself if you're not careful. So that's something to be very cognizant of. So now that I have this secured down with a clamp, I'm going to turn this drill press on and see what happens. Well, once again, this bit was just a little bit too big for my drill press. My motor was consistently bogging down and I don't want to burn up my motor. However, if you do have a more powerful drill press, this bit might be the one for you. Another thing to consider when using this bit in your drill press is you want to slow the motor down quite considerably. Since you're cutting way out here, this is going to be spinning a lot faster than it is in the center. So you'll need to slow down your drill press. I will have to say, however, even though I wasn't able to get through this entire piece of MDF, it did leave a very clean cut hole. And that's what she said. So this is quite an interesting tool and I'm glad I checked it out. However, for me, I just can't use it because my drill press isn't powerful enough. Another thing that concerns me are these swing arms when you have your drill press running. These things are going super fast and it really could cause an injury. Well, I'm a little disappointed that I won't be able to use that tool in my shop. However, if you do have a more powerful drill press and you need to make some larger diameter holes, it might be the thing for you. Well, that covers our first two items. Before we move on to our third item, I ask you to do me a favor and hit that subscribe button below. It really does help out this small woodworking channel and leave a like if you can. Also, for any of the tools that I'm showing here today, I'm gonna to leave links in the description below so you can go check them out for yourself. So if you've watched this channel for any period of time, you know that I love gadgets. I'll surf the web and find the unique gadget that I've never seen before. This next gadget, however, is one that's made by a very reputable brand. So let's take a look at it. So in my opinion, Craig is the king of jigs. I even went as far as to get that router table over there, which is also made by Craig. This next tool, however, is a multi-tool made by Craig. Let's take a look at it. So this is the Craig Multi-Mark Multi-Purpose Layout Tool. Let's open this box and see what it can do. So out of the box, there's only three parts to this tool, and that's a real bonus in my book. There comes a little level that's made out of plastic, a ruler, as well as a little knob. Let's take a closer look at this tool and see what it can do. So first off, just like almost every Craig tool, the frame is made of plastic. It's got a nice little level in the center of it, as well as a little knob. It also comes with a small ruler that has centimeters on one side, as well as inches on the other. So since this is a measuring vise, my biggest concern about this tool was the fact that the frame was made out of plastic. So we're going to do a couple of tests just to make sure that this can keep some accuracy. So that plastic frame really only concerns me when we're using this as a square. If we flip the tool over, there's a little notch in the back where you can add the metal ruler and tighten it down with a knob. Once that's in place, we can test for square. To test for square, I'm going to take my Woodpecker 642 and place it into this Craig square. And as you can see, there's no gaps. Even though this ruler appears to be square, there is a little bit of play in the ruler when it's fully extended. There's probably a 64th of an inch play from the tip of the ruler to the base of the tool. 
So for accuracy purposes, this is not a ruler that I'd use for square because a 30 seconds of an inch can make a big difference when you're building stuff like furniture. Another function of this tool is there's a slot on the back where you can slide your ruler in and lock it down with a knob. Now let's test this piece to see if this is square. So for this test, I'm going to strike a line on one side, then I'm going to flip the tool over and strike a line on the other side. And that appears to be perfectly square. So for the purposes of using this tool in the same way you would use a Polini pocket rule, I think this tool will do the trick. Let's test it out. And that leaves a nice, crisp, clean line. The next feature that this tool claims to have is to lay out a perfectly 45 degree angle. So let's test that next. So in order to use this as a 45 degree angle, you slide it into the tool and you lock it down with that little knob. Now let's see if that's actually 45 degrees. But before we test it out, I did want to mention once again that there's a little bit of play in the ruler, especially when it's fully extended. So for this test, I'm going to strike a line at 45 degrees and then we're going to take our compass and see if that's accurate. And I see 45.1 degrees. So it's fairly accurate. One of the last features that this tool can be used for is you can use it for an angle gauge. So let's test that out. So in order to use this tool as an angle gauge, you flip the tool over, you place your ruler on top, and you loosely tighten it into place. Once you have it loosely tightened, you can place your tool on your angle, find the angle, and lock it down. Once that angle is locked down, you can then transfer it to any other workpiece or take it over to your miter saw and find that angle for your miter saw. So what have I learned by taking a closer look at this Craig Multi-Mark tool? Well, to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed in the accuracy right out of the box. It's not quite square and it's not quite at 45 degrees. However, this isn't why I purchased this tool. If I'm gonna do square, I'm gonna always reach for my Woodpecker 642. What I purchased this for was to be an angle finder and it does that fairly well. The other thing that this tool could be used for is a cheap Polini rule. Now, Polini rules aren't always available and they're quite expensive, so this could be a cheap alternative. The other nice thing about this tool is once it's fully collapsed, it's very compact and can easily slide into a small pocket in your work vest. Well, that's three items down and only two more to take a look at. This next tool is one made by Milescraft, and if it's anything like the other Milescraft tools I've taken a look at, I think this is going to be a winner. So this next tool is a profile sanding kit called the Sand Plane, made by Milescraft. Let's open this box and see what comes inside. So in a previous video, I had featured a detailed sanding kit that was great. It was small enough to get into all those little nooks and crannies, and it came with a ton of sandpaper. However, I think this Milescraft tool is going to take it to the next level. So the biggest complaint that I had about this detail sander that I featured before was you had to purchase some specialized hook and loop sandpaper that would fit this tool. But this Milescraft tool takes your standard 5 inch hook and loop sandpaper. So just like the other detail sander, the Milescraft sander comes with a flat bottom right out of the box. However, you can switch this flat bottom out to some other shapes. Let's take a look at those. So the Milescraft sander, along with a flat bottom, has a concave, convex, as well as a 45 degree attachment that you can easily attach to the bottom of the sand plane. So switching out the bottom of the sand plane is very easy to do. You simply pull it off and it's got two little holes that you easily slide your new pad onto. Once that new pad is on, you're ready for the sandpaper. So once we have that convex pad in place, we can then take our sandpaper and wrap it around the tool. Once that's in place, we can then take a dowel and sand it. Along with the concave attachment, there's also this 45 degree attachment. And I expect this to be a really valuable tool, especially when trying to get some of that hardened glue out of the corners of your work pieces. But most importantly, I don't need to buy any sort of specialty sandpaper. I can go to any big box store or the internet and just purchase some five inch orbital sandpaper and it will fit this tool, which is a big bonus in my book. So once again, in my opinion, Milescraft is killing the game in woodworking. They're making quality tools that everybody can afford. Well, that takes us to four items so far. Once again, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, as it really does help out the small growing woodworking channel. Also, for all the tools we're looking at today, check out the description below, as I'll leave links to all the tools we take a look at. So for our last item today, we're gonna dig a hole all the way to China and check out a China tool. This one's got a great name. 
Here we go again. This is called the Manwa Craft Saw. Let's open this up and I'll show you exactly what it is. So we're really going deep into China for this one. There's not any English on the back of this package. So the reason I purchased this tool is 100% because of the size of it. This thing is the size of a pen or a pencil. Let's take a closer look at some of the blades that come with this saw and see what we can use it for. So inside this package, it comes with nine blades. It's got three packages, each with three blades, along with two carrying cases. Along with the tool, it's also got a protective sheath that allows you to protect your blade. So in order to attach one of these blades to the actual saw, you simply unscrew the handle. This allows you to slide in your blade, and then once it's slid in, you lock it down by tightening it up. So as I said before, this saw comes with three different types of blade. It comes with a long slender blade, it comes with a convex blade, as well as the blade that's installed in the saw. It also comes with two carrying cases, as well as a sheath, which easily slides over the tip of the saw. The main reason I purchased this saw is because I thought it might be nice to have a flush trim saw right in my pocket. So let's see if this can actually do a flush trim on this dowel. And that absolutely did the trick. So I'm actually quite impressed with this little saw. The blade is thin enough where it can easily bend and you can easily flush cut any dowel that you need. Now I just flush cut a walnut dowel and that's about as hard of a dowel that I'm going to be cutting through. Not to mention this saw is so small you can easily slide it into your pocket. Well that's going to wrap us up for today. I hope you enjoyed checking out these five tools that I had to google real deep for. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment, as it really does help out this small channel. Until next time, take care as always.